Good afternoon, I'm Terry Topcat. It's Friday the 19th of May and we're in the beautiful marina in Brighton and I'm with Lee Thompson from Ma Oh no, <laughs> hold on a minute. It's Chrissy Boy ah, from Madness. That's just a gag, you know. <laughs> a lot of people come up to me and cause Terry said the people recognise me and I'm like, yeah, they go, hey, you Lee, Lee, Thompson, I have. I just got recognised actually. You did? He Properly. Was really nice, yeah. Properly. I had to pay him 20 quid. <laughs> but, um, Anyway, yeah. So no, I'm so, with Chrissy Boy, Chris Foreman <clears throat> from the legendary iconic band Madness. We're here to talk about their wonderful career and Chris is going to give us an exclusive about the new album. Um, so I'm just going to quickly say how we, how we met. It was, it was basically on social media. I know yeah. a lot of people don't like social media. He but... groomed me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was following Terry and I thought, I like this guy. You know, we started chatting, didn't we? Yeah, he's very... Enthusiastic music fan. Oh, uh, gosh, yeah. That's what we need. Yeah, yeah especially times like this. Mm -hmm. And then we started chatting, and then you invited me, kindly invited me to uh, the legendary Roundhouse, and Camden's got a lot of history for you guys. We'll, yeah. we'll get onto that. And then when you came out, you came up to me straight away and said, Oh, lovely to meet you, yeah. and I'm a big fan of yours. I'm like, What? You're a fan of me, I'm a fan of you. <laughs> Anyway, so that's how we kind of met, yeah. and uh, I love all your posts. So let's talk about the wonderful band Madness. I, I mean, I was looking up all the bands that, you know, the longest band in the UK. Obviously, you've got the Searchers and the Rolling Stones, but in, in the time period of like <laughs> Depeche Mode and The Cure, I mean, you guys have been going since 76, is that right? 79. 79, but, um, okay. I mean, we did, we sort of split up in 86. So, yeah, between 1986 and 1992, you know, we were. We weren't operational. But you did, we'll talk about, you did a couple of solo Yeah, we did stuff. a few solo projects, yeah. And we did a thing called The Madness, That's which right. was after Madness. You know, and looking back on that, really, you should have just kept everyone together and, you know, but we didn't, so. So you Same, say you yeah. formed in 1979 and you guys formed, is it Camden, all, all of you from Camden? Yeah, or? I mean, it was more like, you know, sort of 70. Yeah, we actually started going to Mike Barson's house and, doing music, sort of 77, yeah, you know, just Mike, Lee and myself, and then we got various people in and out over the years and finally got the winning formula, 79. So obviously music was very different and the Camden scene was very different back then and we had the whole two-tone scene fun. as well, with yeah. the wonderful selector and the, uh, yeah. the specials, so that must have been fun, yeah. being part of that. Yeah. that new sound that was coming out. Yeah, it's sort of funny because we were like, we'd stopped doing all the old standards, you know, that everybody does. We were doing reggae stuff. And just so were these other bands. And we didn't know them, you know, because there was no YouTube or of anything course. like that. But, you know, we started seeing in the press the specials. The Suggs went to see them, you know, and it's funny, yeah, same sort of age as us. So, you know, grew up listening to reggae and stuff. So yeah, it's sort of bit, we were a bit lucky, though. Did you do a lot of gigs together back in, back in the day? No, we did um, this tour in '79, the Two Tone tour, That's which right, was the yeah. specials, Selector and us, you know, and that was that was the main thing. We did other things, but not. Do you know what I mean? We'd turn up and they were playing somewhere, that sort of thing, but. Nothing after that. No. Really. And it was also politically at that time as well. You yeah, know, that was. A lot of kids were going to, you know, either it was it glam rock was finishing and disco and they're all turning to punk and two tone and yeah. it was like a, a sound for the new generation. Yeah, I mean, I always liked disco, you know, <laughs> you know, chic and stuff like oh, that. Oh, we love you know, chic, um, yeah. I think we all did, you know, I think all the band got very eclectic tastes, you know. Maybe I like heavy metal more than they do, but, you know, quite diverse tastes. And what I particularly loved is there was some really prominent strong women. So you had Rhoda, you had yeah. Pauline Black from Selector, yeah. Jenny Bellstar Jenny with the Bell Stars. Yeah, right. So a big shout out to them. <laughs> Jenny Bellstar. And, uh, you know, because, so, you know, a lot, of, that's, a lot yeah. of those bands were with men and male yeah, front yeah. men. So, you know, big up to Pauline Black and Jenny. Yeah. So, was it the first album? Did you have much success? And you, you released the the Prince was the first single, yeah, which, which that uh, was on two tone, and then um, we, you know, because we'd got in the charts, every record company was after us, and um, we didn't, you know, 
they were offering us loads of money and even then we knew you know you got to pay you know it wasn't money we were after and we met Dave Robinson Stiff Records and he was very down to earth he could see Division. something beyond you right. know this two tone thing because we really we weren't a scar band you know and um, so we signed him I got a funny uh, Elton John story actually um, we are you allowed to swear on this yeah, yeah, yeah. sure yeah, one of the labels we saw was Rocket Records, which was Elton John's label. Yes, and but you know, we didn't it. kind of, you know, if he'd have turned up, we might have gone, oh, yeah. but yeah, no, not saying that. Anyway, so we, so we met this woman; she's a nice woman, and then we thought, well, you know, there wasn't really anyone on Rocket Records. Was know. Kiki D on there? Yeah, you know, I may be wrong. So we didn't, you know, we didn't sign to Rocket Records. And we, many, many years later, we were doing the Queen's Jubilee, and we were on the roof of Buckingham Palace. That's right. right. And afterwards, there's this shindig, you know, and I've never seen so many famous people. And Elton John was there. So I went, Elton, you know, we all love you. And he went, why didn't you sign to my fucking label then? And I thought, flipping hell, bearer grants love. Oh, my God, you know? I of you. But, you know, I don't know. I mean, he has got a good sense of humour. He has. And um, oh. I'd like to... Because in those years, we did... We were recording in a studio it's called Air Studios, which is oh, in Oxford yes. Street. We used to use it in the 80s. And one day, we were sitting... I don't know, in the reception, and he came staggering in. It was one of his wild years, you know. <laughs> and he's going, I fucking love you guys, I love you guys, you know. And yeah, we, Elton John, was someone we all really liked as kids, you know. I think, you know, he's one of the greatest. So, I was English getting all crying writers, now. He's yeah. one of the great, you know, British artists, great Absolutely voice, you know. Is, yeah. and, and he's such a good piano player as well. <laughs> I mean, I didn't see his farewell thing have you seen it no I missed yeah. it I, missed I mean it. we were, we did um, we did this thing in Hyde Park and he was on this brilliant he was brilliant you know yeah it wasn't that Jubilee thing I'm sure it's something else but he was playing live and he's doing all those old songs you know I, I, I mean I, my friend Annabelle Lamb who was in the, signed in the 80s and she re in the latter years she was singing backing vocals for Kiki D so I know yeah. Kiki's a lovely lady and she went yeah. and she actually he actually got her to perform I think in the, the LA gig at the Dodgers Stadium so that was oh, lovely right. that he stayed friends yeah. with all these years and yeah, yeah he, I hear so many wonderful things about him yeah yeah he's, he's you know and he's also, and he's is brilliant. And yeah, he also so. really <laughs> champions new artists, which I love. You know, yeah. because I think it's really important. Yeah. Established bands, established artists, you know, helping the new the new artists. Because, you know, as you know, the music industry and the labels, it's so different to when you guys oh, first started. You know, I just remembered. In Air Studios, there's a woman working out, I forgot. That he married. Renee. Uh, Renee. Yeah, she was lovely. Everyone loved her. Yeah. Maybe that's why he came there, you know. Right. To propose. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> we never know. <laughs>there's been a bit of activity recently so you guys have been, a bit of activity. You've been recording some new material new album it all kind of started when we own our back catalog which most people oh, don't. That's wonderful. We're, we're quite sort of lucky yeah in that respect so every few years we sell it you know and uh, we've been with the same company for quite a long time and then when we sold it it's sort of like, oh yeah, you know, it's almost, I don't know if it's a token thing. They go, oh, we'll give you some money to do a new album. So this was BC, which is before COVID. <laughs> all right? And uh, so we kind of, I mean, to go back a bit further, when the band started, we had this place in Finchley Road, which was a friend of ours. Her dad had his house next door and he had a basement, a big door put all that stuff in we could go there whenever we wanted you know and make right. a lot of noise and that was really what you learnt your craft yeah, yeah the form the of the band yeah so I said we need somewhere like that you know so I said to our management can you find somewhere we can rent you know and obviously often have ideas and then <laughs> so they said I found somewhere but it's in Cricklewood it's really quite hard to get to because it wasn't near a tube you know and it's basically a warehouse, you know, and near it is a car repairer or, you know, a furniture 
exporter. You know, and we get on with them. So we've got this place. And we have all our stuff stored there. So we don't have to pay for storage because we were paying for storage. And it's all set up. We can go there whenever we want. So we started BC, before COVID, going there. And we kind of wrote, you know, straight up. If we're all in a room, we'll write some songs. You we'll know, get onto that about how yeah. you write your songs. If we're all in a room, we'll write some songs. So we started doing some songs. And then, you know, it was the old lockdown and flipping, you know, this and that. So we didn't really go there. But then everyone's at home writing songs. So, yeah, going back to this deal. So they, there was this money floating around, you know. Not millions, but, you know, not bad. So I said, why don't we go in there with an engineer and record some songs? You know, because um, everybody, a lot of the band have been watching that Beatles thing. Did you see the Beatles? I didn't actually. It, it's no. really good, you know. It's worth kind of getting, what was it on, Disney or... It Apple, I think it was. It's worth getting it for a month or getting it free just to watch that. Because they, they were just filmed, they were filmed writing songs you know and it wasn't necessarily they weren't in a recording studio I mean it is quite incredible thing to watch it gets a bit it's not boring if you're in a band because you're so used to what they're doing sure and they're really nice they come across as nice was this people at, at, was this at, um, the legendary Abbey Road studio yeah yeah I mean but it, what, they weren't there they, they were here there they were everywhere oh, okay. you know but um, so I said why don't we do that so we went in with this young guy, 30, Matt Glazeby, you know, he had a good CV, looked at his CV, he knew what he was doing. So let's do three songs, see how it comes out. So we did three, you know, and everybody loved him. Because these days, people like him, they're so fast, you know. And what we did... Did we, you record live? Yeah, sort of. Because what we did, we've all done these demos at home. Right. Using computers, you know, technology and they're Pro pretty. Tools they're pretty. It. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I use Logic, um, and they were like of quite good, you know. So we sat down, we played everyone's. We wrote a list on a wall. The wall. Uh, How many songs do you think? Oh, you we had? had loads. We had loads, and we slowly. I said he should sort of pick. So he's oh, going, wow, you know, okay. no, because if we all start, yeah. You know, so that, does that cause a lot of problems sometimes? Because there's so many of you, and you have different opinions. It, yeah, yeah, it did. You know, because Mike, the keyboard player, said, "I thought we were going to vote, but I mean, getting this band to vote." <laughs> you know, if you said, "Here's a colour red and here's a colour blue," you know, which one do you prefer? You know, someone would go, "Well, what if it was a different sort of red?" You know, maybe <laughs> it should be, you know, you more bluish red. No. We would never have Made voted. A decision, we yeah. never would have voted on like what is it, thirty songs? Which three do you want to do? So it's down to him. So we slowly like whittling these songs away, and it was like what we'd do. You know, we'd kind of maybe change them a bit, and then he would play the actual demo. You know, the drums, the bass, and we would play along with it. Oh, see, I was like that. I was like that. <laughs> We play along with them, and I sort of likened it to you know when a small kid's got a bike with those wheels, and you yes. take the wheels away. Like suddenly you took the demo away, and we were oh look we're playing a song, <laughs> and like really you, you know you just have to get really good bass and drums. You know, and Mark and Woody are very flipping solid. You know, so we'd get that, and then after a while it wasn't like we were all sitting there. You know, um, during um, so we started in November. Can you name any of the songs? Are you allowed oh, to Oh, yeah, 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 okay. yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So which were the three that you... The three that we did, uh, one was called... Um, God, what was it called? <laughs> no, you got me now. Oh, sorry. Was it the... Th you can edit this. Theatre of the Absurd. Theatre of the Absurd. That's a great yeah. title. Oh, we'll get on to that. But it was that, Baby Burglar and, Baby and I Go Mad. Now, Baby Burglar and I Go Mad, we've been playing them live... So it's a bit of a cheat because I said let's do those three because one of them we kind of had a recording of it because we did this thing at the at the Palladium, the streaming thing. So we had that. So we got those three. Yeah, and that was when everyone was like, oh yeah, you know. So then after a while, you know, we're like really knocking these songs out, and of course it got freezing in this place. You know, we had it soundproofed a bit, but not cold proofed. You know. 
So then we, we stopped in December. And then I was like, come on, we need to get back in January. And uh, Mike, by then, by then, I think we had like 15 songs or something, you know. And what we were doing, you know, we were working on them and the, the guy, Matt, the producer, engineer, engineer yeah. he, as we went along, he was mixing them. You know, rather than sit at the end with 19 sure, songs and yeah. try and do them one by one. So he was doing that. You know, and in the, these days, I could go, well, I've got this idea and I'll do it at home and send it to him. You know, I could do a guitar thing. I could send it to him. He'd put it in, he'd get it in time. <laughs> you know, and he, he could put it through an amp. You know, or whatever, or any kind of effect. You know, and he could do that with Mike. He could do it, you know, vocals is obviously harder. So that was the process. And then in January, when we probably must have had 14 songs, Mike Barson said, I'm going to India for a month to do a Buddhism thing. Which he wrote. Yeah, so he, oh, right, okay. So off he goes. But in that period, we recorded five songs. You know, because we had all these, Wonderful. you know, yeah. stuff. Because I thought, oh, what are we going to do? Yeah, because there's two that I'd written. Yeah, I wrote this one called Run For Your Life. And um, that started off with just a drum percussion thing. And then some guitar, then brass. And then I thought these lyrics up, it's sort of in January. And it's about... Um, Excuse me. Swearing, that man's swearing. So... Um, I love it when people go, I'm in a traffic jam, you know. <laughs> like, you, know you can just lie about anything, can't you? So anyway, um, so I wrote this song called Run For Your Life. Because I thought of that chorus, right, Run For Your Life. And, I thought, and then it's, you know, like the papers are always going, you know, chemtrails, flipping monkey pox. There's all these things, helicopters, you know, <laughs> that are going to like helicopter spine on us, yeah. Terry. Yeah, oh my that God. That is, it's, Ask Jenny, he's put in the CIA. Uh, that's my helicopter, I've got a... Uh, God, fuck me. Don't you see... You see these really big military ones, though, sometimes? And all the really? windows start shaking. Oh, wow. So, yeah, that song, yeah, it kind of wrote itself. And I put something about artificial intelligence in it as well. And that's suddenly... Everyone's scared stiff of artificial intelligence. And I wrote the lyrics... You know, the, do you Friendly. find it easy to write lyrics? No, you know, I never really have, but I sort of like was sending songs to people. I just started thinking, oh, I'll write some lyrics, you know, and I wrote one that was pretty whimsical. Well, a couple that were sort of whimsical. And then two more serious ones, you know. And this Run For Your Life one, I put, uh, you know, here comes the robot AI, right? It just sucks when here comes the robot A1. <laughs> and um, that's sort of another story because he put this funny thing in and I kind of changed it. And you would have to wait and see. I have actually. We, do you have a, a working title for the album yet? Well, Sucks wanted to call it Theatre of the Absurd, which you think. Yeah, is that's great. a great name. And I, I think, I think no one else seems to really like it. Okay. And we had got a song called Cell V. So I said, oh, Cell V. Not like it's a definitive title. So, of course, we're doing a tour at Christmas and it says Madness, sell off fee. <laughs> so, so maybe that's why he defaced a picture of Michael McIntyre. You may have seen this online. We went to the O2. There's a big poster of us, you know. So, and they gave us some things, pens. It's like, you know. I'm not a fan of Michael Everybody, no, like, started drawing. So, I went, look, and he drew a big willy on Michael. Oh. Yeah, I don't like it. And it cost I'll us be so, honest. I, I mean, I thought he was funny and then I went to see him as um, I tell you I like Mickey Flanagan I love Mickey know, Flanagan he's just so yeah, he's funny, funny. he um, was on I went to see that I was very lucky to go and see John from Ross show and he was on with Grace Jones Nicole yeah. Scherziger yeah. Nadia who won oh, the Bake Off and, oh, yeah. and, and and Mickey was just so funny and he was yeah. doing some jokes with Grace and it was hilarious yeah, I, mean, I love Mickey did Flanagan. they go over her head do you think no she, she, oh, she, she got it, totally yeah. got it because some yeah, yeah some it was that one when he says I went in a restaurant and they after tomato sauce and they bought like a little thing out, you know, and he said, very nice, I'll have a whole bottle. <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> that was how it's wine, you know, when they... 
we were doing a Christmas tour, by the way. So plug for that. Plug for that. When does it start and how many dates? I don't know. <laughs> Sometimes. Sort of Sometime it starts in, in November. No, 30th of December, November it starts in Aberdeen. P&J Arena. True. And then the next one, I don't know. I'm going to look online. But between now and then, we're doing like shows in the summer. And like, well, shall we... I mean, I like playing new stuff but I thought even though we've got this rehearsal place the band are scattered there's okay. a limo what the hell is that <laughs> should be electric shouldn't it they do electric ones oh look now look See, that's been replaced the by the dogs. barking dogs oh, that's quite funny isn't it? <laughs> keep that bit in um, <laughs> So we sort yeah, because because Woody has moved to a remote part of Scotland, so it's like as far up as you can get, I think. So you know to get him down, it's quite hard for him, you know. Which just sounds, doesn't it? It sounds like it's not like you know Mike Barson used to live in Holland, but he had a place so in when, London. So let's say when you re rehearse for this tour, yeah, how long do you rehearse for a week or is there some... maybe you know hopefully five days, hopefully. But five days for us is three days. Yeah, for people to turn up, to get everything working. Sure. You, know, you work with the same crew for a long time? Yeah, you know, most of them have managed to. And you hang have a really great jobs. horn. You work with the same horn guys? Well, that's session. a little sort of thing, you know, because obviously they have to go off and do other stuff. Of course. Because they can't always yeah. do us. But those three, yeah, Cotton Eye Joe, um, what's, what's your name? It's Cotton Eye Joe. <laughs> Steve Hamilton and Mike Kearsey are the, the, the main three, but yeah, they're, they're quite funny, should we say. So I want to talk about also, we talked about uh, the madness and the, yeah. the nutty boys, yeah. but you also have, tell everyone about the axe cam, because that's really oh, novel, that. that's, that's, that's amazing. I sort of stopped doing that. I, um, Why? Because it was uh, great. You know, maybe I'll bring it back. Yeah. Um, what happened was, I had this Samsung phone, it was, it was the first, the, the axe cam. So I had this Samsung phone, I think it was a D600. And if you remember, like, phones, it used to be, look how small my phone is. You know, now it's like, yeah. look at this laptop <laughs> flipping phone. But yeah. then it was like, look how small Never my phone is, you know, is. like, um, and it was really cool, it would, it, you could slide it up. And I thought, oh, I stuck it to my guitar strap I started filming things so that's how it started off and then I went through various um, things um, I had a camera there was these cameras called Flip they were really good and, you know, and they kind of went I don't know if they went bust but they were really good they were like USB they were very point and shoot you know very simple cameras so I had one of them I've had a uh, what are they called? GoPro, you know GoPro? Yes, yeah. yeah. The thing with GoPro, it's flipping great, but the sound quality ain't very good because they're in this sort of plastic thing. Yeah, and I had this GoPro, and I had an elastic thing, and I put it on my hat. So it's flipping brilliant, actually. Yeah, maybe, yeah, you've got me thinking there, Terry. I mean, now all I do is... So explain what you'd, you'd also do with other musicians as well. As oh, well as yeah, yeah. Live. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to go and, like... Um, we would be doing a festival and I'll go and find someone like your man from Coldplay, you know. And he's this thing, meet and greet, and I just say hello and some stupid thing like. I said to him, what's your carbon footprint like? Because they came in a private jet to this festival. Oh my this gosh, festival. and he's all about that. Yeah, yeah, he's all about that. But yeah. I, I mean, he seems a nice guy. I he seems he's a nice guy. guy. Yeah. You know, and I tell you, he's a, he, like Ed Sheeran, like, you know, like, you know, he's an easy, you know, not, not for me, not, but, yeah, not for me, nice but honestly, too, he's a documentary about him. Oh, I've seen on, it advertised. Uh, Disney. I've seen, have I've you seen got Disney? No, but I've seen it advertised. Wait, so we'll have to get in Disney for a minute. Okay. I no, want to get the Apple TV for the Beatles. Movie. I was like, you know, I cried, you know, um, and he's a very nice young man. And, and I think, like, recently, yeah, he's got a huge plagiarism because some of his songs are a bit 
But you know, the recent one, it's like, come on. You know, they're kind of like ambulance chasers. They're not even, they didn't even write a song. Yeah, well, yeah. You know, like, do you know what I mean? If yeah, Marvin Gaye had gone... But, but the one with Bruno Mars... Oh, and Bruno that, Mars, that, that, oh that, yeah. That, yeah. Was, that was, that was, that was, that wasn't oh. Bruno Mars, it no, was... Um, Robin Thicke. That was yeah. a blatant copy, oh, yeah. and the original was so much better. No, and I heard that, and I thought, oh, they've sampled Marvin Gaye. But getting back to it, you, yeah. yeah, he, you know... So did you get him on the axe cam? No, no, I never met it, you know, and, um, but he, yeah, I think you know he got he got off the recent case, you know. And I thought, you know, I'm glad he did because we don't need a can of worms. Everyone would be getting, you know, like, this is slightly that drum beat, you know. People just, you know, I do get worried. You know, I think, well, is it, I know we've done a couple that have been very near the mark, but I won't go into that. <coughs> <laughs> so talking about it's all about the songs, and I was talking yeah. to you before off camera about sinking and you'd be yeah, very yeah, lucky yeah. that yeah. Madness have got so many iconic songs, especially Our House, yeah, that's the one. so that's many the, that's the one adverts really. and you said that you're using a lot in America. So what so when you first came out did you did you play a lot of America a lot? And no, I know you no, were gonna no. do the that tour no. B C or D D C with the wonderful well, it was uh, BC, big big, then big then shout out to, no, it's, to no, Dave Wakeling and the English B. Um, yeah, well really initially in nineteen seventy nine we were doing that two times a week. And we were with Sire Records in America. Yeah, good neighbour uh, And, that and uh, Yeah, it was a great... We, we were stiff in England, Sire, because we loved seeing all Sire. We recently died. And yeah, I was really so. sad about that, because he really was one of the greats. He you know, was. He was such a funny guy. And he had so much knowledge of music. So we went to America, because we wanted to be the first two time to go to America. So we went to America, and I thought it was going to die, you know, like... We were drinking and like you know we were on really late and we had to go on twice and we kind of built up over the years this cult thing in America. You know. But really, if you're in the middle of nowhere, yeah, you know, like they don't LA, know who you are. New I York. think we got accused of playing that N-word music somewhere in America. Yeah, somewhere kind of not Texas, somewhere like that. You know, why are you playing that? You know, and um, we we liked it. We liked it, but because of that, we neglected Fortress Europe because we were so big in Europe. And but still, when you're big in Europe, sort of trying to claw our way back. But it's like um, we were very big in Europe. The first album sold more in France than it did in England. But we kind of thought, oh, let's go to Belgium when you can go to New York. You know, we 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 really we, we neglected it, and it's diminishing returns. You know, as well. Um, in recent years, yeah, I'm always very really enthusiastic to go to Europe because I like it. You know, like Germany, France. We well, don't really go to Italy much. It's usually France and Germany, a bit of Belgium, some Holland. Belgium. You know, yeah. You know, and it, you know, we've learned to appreciate their culture. You know, because we'd be like, oh, egg and chips. What I would. What's with these things? You know, continental breakfasts. Yeah, now we're absolute ponces, you know, and we you know, have to have our oatmeal lattes. <laughs> and, uh...